This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a man phoning a woman about an advertisement he has seen in the paper for some furniture. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about the advertisement in yesterday's newspaper, the one for the bookcases. Can you tell me if they're still available? We've sold one, but we still have two available. Right. Um, can you tell me a bit about them? Sure. Um, what do you want to know? Well, I'm looking for something to fit in my study. So, well, I'm not too worried about the height, but the width's quite important. Can you tell me how wide each of them is? They're both exactly the same size. Let me see. I've got the details written down somewhere. Yes, so they're both 75 centimetres wide and 180 centimetres high. OK, fine. That should fit in OK. And I don't want anything that looks too severe. Not made of metal, for example. I was really looking for something made of wood. That's all right. They are, both of them. So are they both the same price as well? No, the first bookcase is quite a bit cheaper. It's just £15. Pounds. We paid £60 for it just five years ago, so it's very good value. It's in perfectly good condition. Well, they're both in very good condition, in fact. But the first one isn't the same quality as the other one. It's a good sturdy bookcase. It used to be in my son's room, but it could do with a fresh coat of paint. Oh, it's painted? Yes, it's cream at present. But as I say, you could easily change that if you wanted. To fit in with your colour scheme. Yes. I'd probably paint it white if I got it. Let's see. What else? How many shelves has it got? Six. Two of them are fixed, and the other four are adjustable, so you can shift them up and down according to the sizes of your books. Right. Fine. Well, that certainly sounds like a possibility. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10.
Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. But the second one's a lovely bookcase too. That's not painted, it's just the natural wood colour, dark brown. It was my grandmother's, and I think she bought it sometime in the 1930s, so I'd say it must be getting on for 80 years old. So it's very good quality. They don't make them like that nowadays. And you said it's the same dimensions as the first one? Yes, and it's got the six shelves. But it also has a cupboard at the bottom that's really useful for keeping odds and ends in. Right. Oh, and I nearly forgot to say, the other thing about it is it's got glass doors, so the books are all kept out of the dust. So it's really good value for the money. I'm really sorry to be selling it, but we just don't have the room for it. Mm. So what are you asking for that one? £95. It's quite a bit more, but it's a lovely piece of furniture. A real heirloom. Yes. All the same, it's a lot more than I wanted to pay. I didn't really want to go above 30 or 40. Anyway, the first one sounds fine for what I need. Just as you like. So, is it all right if I come round and have a look this evening? Then, if it's OK, I can take it away with me. Of course. So, you'll be coming by car, will you? I've got a friend with a van, so I'll get him to bring me round. If you can just give me the details of where you live. Sure. I'm Mrs Blake. B-L-A-K-E. That's right. And the address is 41 Oak Rise. That's in Stanton. OK. So I'll be coming from the town centre. Can you give me an idea of where you are? Yes. You know the road that goes out towards the university? Yes. Well, you take that road and you go on till you get to a roundabout. Go straight on, then Oak Rise is the first road to the right. Out towards the university, past the roundabout, first left. First right. And we're at the end of the road. Got it. So I'll be round at about seven, if that's all right. Oh, and my name's Connor. Connor Field. Fine. I'll see you then, Connor. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a presenter on a radio show. The presenter is talking to the manager of a local library. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
And welcome back to the programme. Today I'm talking with Mary Littlejohn from Mere Green Library. As you'll all know, we've sadly been without our local library for the past three months. But the good news is that it's about to open again. Great news, Mary. It certainly is, Jonathan. Despite the fact that money's in short supply, I think visitors will be pleasantly surprised at how different and hopefully better everything is. Fortunately, we didn't need to replace the roof as we'd originally feared. It just needed repairing, so we were left with more money than we expected. We've been able to replace all that old wooden shelving with a more modern style. The computers have been moved to a new designated IT room, and on the subject of technology, visitors can now order and return books and CDs on their own with our new automated system, so no more queuing to be served. Sadly, money ran out before we had the chance to decorate the meeting room, but we're hoping to complete that next year. Oh, and the children's section now has some colourful new tables and chairs as well. That all sounds fantastic. So are you having a big reopening party? Well, the doors open on the 28th of August and we'll be serving tea, coffee and sandwiches at 12.30. Then we get down to business in September. The local history society will be meeting on the first Monday of each month at 7.30 as usual and we'll be starting our Wednesday lunchtime book club at one o'clock. Both of those events are in the meeting room. The computer club won't be running in September as we still need to complete work in the IT suite, but this will certainly be returning in October. And we're especially looking forward to welcoming a local writer, Sally Wainwright, to a new event on the 22nd of September. This will be the first of a series of events we're calling Ask the Author. Visitors will be able to hear authors read from their latest works, ask questions and even buy a copy of their book to take home. Before you hear more of the radio show, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. I might pop along to that one myself. Now, I understand you also have a request. Yes, that's right. We're looking for anyone who has a few spare hours each week who would like to offer their services to the library. Our computer classes have become so popular over the past year that we're thinking about starting a second session and we'll need someone to run it. The current teacher will work with you, so you won't be left to sort things out on your own. We can promise the person a warm welcome and a class of very motivated people, many of whom are at quite a high level. We're also trying to do our bit to break down the generation gap, and we've been inviting some of our older citizens in to talk to school groups about the past. The children range in age from 7 to 11. They're always accompanied by their teacher, by the way, but we haven't opened it up to teenagers yet. So if you'd like to help out, please get in touch. Those who've been making use of the mobile library. Yes, because the library has been closed, we've been running a mobile library service and going out to people in the community. Well, 
Feedback has been so positive about this, particularly amongst our elderly users, that we've decided to keep it going. Users can reserve books if the bus doesn't have anything that they feel like borrowing. There's a computer on board with access to the library database, so the librarian will be able to reserve one for you. Unfortunately, we don't stock newspapers or magazines on the bus, as these tend to be for reference purposes only and can't be taken away. We're also pleased to be working with the local council, who've agreed to send someone from the community office on the bus. They'll be able to help you with any local issues you may have. Well, many thanks, Mary. I'm sure our listeners will be delighted to hear the service is fully up and running again. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You'll hear a conversation in a university student services office. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hello, um, I'm Dawn Matthews. Yes, hello. I've been referred to you because I'm inquiring about the refresher courses that you run. I'd like to find out a bit more about them. OK. Well, we run quite a few different short courses for students who are either returning to study or studying part-time. Um, tell me about your situation. Well, I think that I really need some help in preparing for the coming semester, uh, especially to build up my confidence a bit and um, help me study effectively because, you see, I've been out in the workforce for nearly 12 years now, so it really is a long time since I was last a student. <laughs> yes, it can seem like a long time, can't it? <laughs> um, well, let me start by telling you what courses we have that might suit you. Are you an undergraduate or a postgraduate, arts or sciences? Undergraduate, and I'm in the business faculty. Right, then. Well, first of all, there's our intensive Study for Success seminar on the 1st and 2nd of February. Mm -hmm. It's aimed at students like you, who are uncertain about what to expect at college, and looks at a fairly wide range of approaches to university learning mm. to motivate you to begin your study and build on your own learning strategies. Mm, that sounds good. Uh, what are some of the strategies that are presented? Well, we try to cover all aspects of study. Some of the strategies in writing, for example, would be improving your planning for writing, organising your thinking, and building some techniques to help you write more clearly. With reading, there'll be sessions aimed at getting into the habit of analysing material as you read it, mm. and tips to help you record and remember what you've read. It really is very important to begin reading confidently right from the beginning. Mm. There's also advice on how to get the most from your lectures and practice in giving confident presentations as well as how to prepare for exams. What about the motivational side of things? Ah, 
Well, there's a range of motivational exercises that we do to help the students feel positive and enthusiastic about their study. The process of learning and exploring a subject can lead to a whole new way of looking at the world, and the study skills and techniques that you build up can be applied in all sorts of different ways. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Uh, actually, I, um, I'm very excited about the whole thing of taking up studying again, mm. but, you know, I'm a little nervous about whether I'll manage to get everything done. Uh, I suppose it's the same for all mature students. Of course it is. <laughs> Two of the key components of the course are time management and overcoming procrastination. People discover that once they learn to plan their days, all the work can be accomplished and there'll still be time for leisure. Is there an enrolment fee? Well, um, oh, just a minute, let's see. Ah, uh, the cost is 30 pounds, which includes all course materials and morning tea. You have to arrange your own lunch. Mm, well, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, I already make sandwiches for my three kids and my wife and myself every day. Uh, I won't have to change my routine. No. Now, I need to tell you that this is a very popular course and it's essential that you book well ahead of time. In fact, the course convener tells me that there are only five places left. Um, what other course might be good for me? There is one other that you could benefit from. It's simply called Learning Skills for University Study and is on three consecutive mornings starting on a Monday from 9 to 12 and costs £25. Hmm. This is aimed at upgrading the study skills most school leavers have and help them cope with the increased demands of university study. It focuses mainly on making students more responsible for their own success. What sort of things are covered in this course? Well, basically, it's more advanced thinking, note-taking, reading and writing strategies, but also some input about stress management. Hmm. I think I'd be better off starting from the basics and looking at all the strategies, don't you? Yes. From what you've told me, I think that's more in line with your situation. All right, then. Um, can I book a place on the Study for Success seminar course now? Yes. Let me just get out a registration form and take down your details. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear an environmental studies student giving a presentation about his project on saving an endangered species of plant.
Now you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. For my presentation, I'm going to summarise what I've found out about efforts to save one plant species, the juniper bush. It once flourished in Britain and throughout the world's temperate zones, but over the last few decades has declined considerably. Before I go on to explain the steps being taken to save it in England, let me start by looking at some background information and why the juniper has been so important in cultural as well as ecological terms, historically and in the present day. Firstly, I want to emphasise the fact that juniper is a very ancient plant. It has been discovered that it was actually amongst the first species of plants to establish itself in Britain in the period following the most recent Ice Age. And, as I say, it has a much valued place in British culture. It was used widely as a fuel during the Middle Ages because when burnt, the smoke given off is all but invisible and so any illicit activities involving fire could go on without being detected. For example, cooking game hunted illegally. It also has valuable medicinal properties. Particularly during large epidemics, oils were extracted from the juniper wood and sprayed in the air to try to prevent the spread of infection in hospital wards. And these days, perhaps its most well-known use is in cuisine, cooking, where its berries are a much-valued ingredient used to favour a variety of meat dishes and also drinks. Turning now to ecological issues, juniper bushes play an important role in supporting other living things. If juniper bushes are wiped out, this would radically affect many different insect and also fungus species. We simply cannot afford to let this species die out. So, why is the juniper plant declining at such a rapid rate? Well, a survey conducted in the north and west of Britain in 2004-5 showed that a major problem is the fact that in present-day populations, ratios between the sexes are unbalanced and without a proper mix of male and female, bushes don't get pollinated. Also, the survey found that in a lot of these populations, the plants are the same age, so this means that bushes grow old and start to die at similar times, leading to swift extinction of whole populations. Now, the charity Plant Life is trying to do something to halt the decline in juniper species. It's currently trying out two new major salvage techniques, this time focusing on lowland regions of England. The first thing it's trying is to provide shelters for the seedlings in areas where juniper populations are fairly well established. These, of course, are designed to help protect the plants at their most vulnerable stage. A further measure is that in areas where colonies have all but died out, numbers are being bolstered by the planting of cuttings which have been taken from healthy bushes elsewhere. Now, I hope I've given a clear picture of the problems facing this culturally and ecologically valuable plant and of the measures being taken by plant life to tackle them. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy... That is the end of part four. 
You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.